Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the MSI GeForce RTX 2070 Super Gaming X with Twin Frozer 7 thermal design to it. And this is an unboxing video where we talk to you about this card as well as showing off benchmarks and other things. Now I've done a separate video where I mounted it in the Corsair's 4000D Airflow, both in the standard setup and vertically mounted and did testing on both those setups to show you what the difference is between those. But in this video, I'm going to be going over what it's like, giving you some close up looks of it and discussing the various features as well as the performance of it and the highlights to it. Now, this is obviously part of the 20 series of GPUs from Nvidia and MSI. And this is a graphics card that sports eight gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. It has three DisplayPort connections and an HDMI connection as well, and has a boost clock of 1800 megahertz and a memory speed of 14 gigabytes per second. It is a very nice looking card that is still well worth considering if you've been waiting for a 30 series or just want something with ray tracing goodness in it. Now this is part of the super lineup, which means faster than the original RTX 20 series cards. MSI claims this is six times faster than the previous 10th generation as well. This card has a number of interesting highlights to it, which as you'll see as we go through includes the option to play hard but silently and that's quite a clever technology in here which basically means that the fans won't run if they're not required meaning that the card stays silent which is really nice in something like the 4000D setup that I had where the fans that all came with the cooler in that also had a zero RPM mode which meant that when the computer wasn't under too much load none of the fans spun so it was incredibly quiet and also just ran really quietly as well so if you're looking for a card that has the potential to be pretty powerful and deliver some serious very nice quality gaming then this might well be it. MSI recommend a minimum of a 650 watt PSU to go along with this and then you can get up to 4k gaming out of it with a max resolution of 7680 by 4320 so there's a lot of potential in terms of what you can put out of it and obviously you have a number of different outputs to put out to different monitors as well. The other thing that you'll see is the design of the fans. As you can see here, it has two sorts of fan designs to it that includes a dispersion blade and a traditional fan blade. Some of these are designed with a different curvature to them, which basically means that it gets maximum airflow to keep it running cool when it needs it. As I said, it has three DisplayPort connections and an HDMI 2.0B connectivity option as well. You will notice a brushed aluminium backplate that is designed to keep the card nice and strong, but also to allow for cooling. And it has a number of different points on it that allow for cooling of the card and keep it running in nice and cool and efficiently. You can see that not only looks the part but does a good job too very nice style to it really nice finish on it i would recommend checking this card out in the vertical mounting mode as you'll see in a minute when i had that set up and you probably saw it earlier on as i said i did a separate video if you want to see more of that so more of it mounted vertically because it is a very nice looking card it has these very nice looking fan fins to it with the MSI logo like embossed on them as well as like a carbon fiber-esque finish to it. Obviously that brushed aluminium backplate and it also has RGB lighting zones around the outside of the fans that can be customized within the MSI Dragon Center software and I'll cover that a bit later on as well as talking about the performance of it and what it was like. I've actually tested this a few different times with different setups to see how it performed as well. So stick with me to the end to see the benchmarks and I'll also include all the specifications and things like that in the description so you can check it out for yourself and see how it stood up to the test. This 2070 Super is certainly a nice looking card. I've always been a fan of the Founders Edition cards, but actually this one is also very nice too. It has a number of good customization options to it and design quirks like the fact that those fans run quietly or not at all when not needed is obviously awesome. You can see a very nice chunky heat sink and cooling setup here as well, which means that the card runs nice and cool 
even under pressure and delivers some impressive results. Now, for the mounting options, as I said, I went with a standard setup initially. I also wanted to test it with vertical mounting. Obviously, this is going to depend wildly on your case and how you set it up. And I did some tests that proved that mounting this card in this case wasn't a good idea vertically because it basically led to a massive increase in temperature and a reduction in frames. But that is going to vary depending on what case you're using and how much airflow you have flowing through it. As you'll notice, for example, I have a 360mm radiator on the front of this case, which means that the airflow coming through from the front isn't ideal, and therefore I was basically throttling the card and not delivering the best results. But also, the design means that the card is a bit too close to the side of the case, reducing the airflow. So actually, traditionally mounted, this card does better performance, but you can see that the RGB lighting on the underside isn't terribly visible unless you're below it. Now, I run some benchmarks, and as I said, I'll link in the description to these so you can see them for yourself with 3D Mark, PC Mark, and Heaven Benchmark, as well as Cinemark and other things like that. And basically, you ran it and tested out how the performance got on in terms of frame rate delivery and also just the temperatures that it ran at. And you can see the scores here, and it says that alongside the Core i7 current CPU 10700K and 32 gigs of RAM that it actually is below a 2020 PC in terms of the performance it's delivering but that's probably because obviously there's the 30 series cards coming out now and you can see it running here and you'll see what I was talking about with the fans not spinning you can see the case fans are spinning the GPU is working and when it was plugged in it was also doing this a lot when it wasn't under heavy load and so this is where you get that joy. Now you can see with the vertical mounting, you also see the difference between it with the RGB lighting on the side being much more visible with a nice looking card. So if you can get it into a vertically mounted position, it really shines nicely. Now with Heaven set up, I got around 50 FPS and that's with everything maxed out at the top. And that is with it in the vertical position where unfortunately it ran very hot, but I will show you the performance later on with it in the standard position. It is worth noting that it did do a good job and delivered some very nice visuals still, and it ran smoothly, but the only difference is you noticed the difference in temperature, a significant difference in temperature with running it vertically. But again, this isn't necessarily a commentary on the card, but the setup, and see that other video for a bit more information on that, because that is obviously going to vary wildly depending on the size of your case and the airflow through it and your setup. But for a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see here the two 3D marks ran on it in the different positions. On the right-hand side is with it in the standard setup. On the left-hand side is with it vertically mounted. On the right, you can see it got 63 degrees centigrade average temperature. On the left, with it vertically mounted, had 78 degrees, so significantly hotter. It also ran with less frames per second, worse performance and vertical mounting. But it still delivered a really good experience in terms of the FPS that it was putting out, considering that it was under that load. And you can see it still does 59% better than most gaming PCs, but sits below modern 2020 PCs while doing so. And I'll link to these results in the description so you can check them out for yourself and go through and see what the scores were as well as including other information there that you might be interested in. But I thought it was a valid test to show the difference between how it performed. And this was actually part of a build that I was doing to compare two PCs, one from 2007 on the left hand side that I built with the one from 2020. Now, as I said, the card is compatible with MSI's Dragon Center software. In there, you can obviously do a number of changes to it, including changing how it performs and adjusting the fan speed and other things. But it's also compatible with Mystic Light, meaning you can control the RGB lighting on it in a number of different ways. And I think it's worth just showing off what that's like as well. There are a number of different options, including syncing it up with games and using ambient mode and ambient link as well, which links up with Philips Hue. So you, if you use Mystic Light and you've got MSI peripherals and products, then you can get these to match up and deliver a really interesting visual to it. As I said, if you're mounting it in the traditional way, you don't get a terrible amount of light out of it in terms of the RGB lighting. There's a bit on the side that you will see and you can customize and you can customize that and the 
edges around the fans as well. So if you vertically mount it, you certainly get more out of the RGB lighting than you do with it in the standard position. But you can see you have the option to link it with other MSI stuff, including the motherboard, because this is MSI motherboard, is already the Z490 Ace in there as well. And I'll put all the specifications for the PC in the description as well, so you can get an idea of what that's like. But then you can see some of the controls for the uh, RGB lighting, and you have that next to the logo, and then on the underside with the fans as well. And you can go through various different options in terms of the custom lighting that you get. You know, the whirling, breathing, fade in, crossing, steady, flashing, double flashing, and static colors too. So there's plenty of different options to customize the RGB lighting and get it the way you want it to. Now I put it back into that standard position. I was actually running this PC with some SP fans, static pressure fans on the front rod and trying out some different things. And I put it through heaven again. And you can see the temperature is a lot lower now, 60 degrees centigrade. It ran cooler and it delivered a better performance that time around. And tested this basically card multiple times with different tests and different benchmarks. And I'll leave all those in the description so you can see them and check them out. But then I also put it through Assassin's Creed on the ultra settings, on those high settings to see how it would do there. And that came out at an average of 51 FPS, which isn't too bad. It was 2560 by 1080. Um, so not 4K and not standard 1080p, uh, but everything was on ultra high and those results aren't too bad. All in all, a very nice card, really nice looking, very customizable, quiet running, efficient, fast and delivers some great performance. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. And have a great life.